Hey, what's up team? Today we're gonna to be breaking down the trades that were mentioned in the alert room. We're up $351. It's day number 67 of the $1,000 account challenge. Uh, we took four trades today. I took four trades today. Three winners, one loser. And I'm gonna break all of this down line, literally line by line in the alert room to hopefully bring all of the alerts back to full circle to help you understand kind of my rationale behind the trades that I was taking and uh, what I was thinking, where I was entering, why I was entering, why I was exiting, all of those things, all right? So we're gonna start off uh, in the alert room with, um, uh, with the first trade that was mentioned. It was Amazon red to green, and I said that I was loading calls uh, to, to take this long on the dip. And same with AMD, right? We can prep the long by loading the calls. Unfortunately, what happened, I'm gonna move over to my flex grid here. Unfortunately, what happened is Amazon here ran up and really didn't give us a dip. And then same with AMD. If I move this to the one minute time frame, this initial run happened and it didn't really give us a dip to take either one of those long. And uh, because they were feeling extended off the trigger levels, what I was waiting for was a dip entry on those, but they didn't give us a dip back to the trigger level like SPY did, okay? So I'm basing my trades today off of what's trading near the, the trigger levels. So AMD, within the first five minutes, had pushed up above the trigger and continued to push. Amazon had pushed up above the trigger and continued to push. SPY pushed up above the trigger, but this one gave us that pullback to the trigger. And so that's why, or that's when I decided I'm gonna take a trade or trades on SPY as opposed to taking trades at that time on AMD and Amazon. So I said Amazon was a red to green loading calls to take this long on the dip. We never got the dip, so I didn't take the entry. Uh, the next trade idea mentioned was SPY. I said, SPY, we can take this long on a dip if 4025 validates as support. Uh, and then I give you the contracts the next minute later. And then in that same minute, I said that dip happened too fast. Um, I missed the trade idea. So let's break this down. 930, let's just go with the 35 minute mark. That was right here. So as SPY ran up, I said, we can take this long on this dip on this candle right here for the move up. And I just wasn't fast enough. I had the contracts loaded. I was typing to you guys and it got bought up so quickly and pushed into high of day. At this point, I'm thinking, what? We don't chase the move, right? We look for the dip entry because even if the run happens without us and if we feel like we've missed the move, chances are we have, but that doesn't mean the trade is over right? We can still look for the dip entry. All right. Uh, spy long. So, and that's exactly what I told you right here. Spy long, still a trade idea. Let's just sit on this for a second and see what's going to happen. And then two minutes later at the 39 minute mark, spy long, I took starter size there. So I give you the exact contracts, um, the exact fill price and the exact stop loss at the 39 minute mark, and that's gonna be right here. So what I noticed was SPY, let's go back to the big chart here. What I noticed was SPY was running up and then pulled back, pulled back, started to hold this level as a point of support, $403. And if we go back to the day trade watch list within the Discord server, SPY today was a long over 403. This is the epitome of a textbook trade based on how we trade within this server. You wait for the stock to break the trigger level, check, that's confirmation. Don't chase it up, instead wait for the dip entry. Perfect, perfect, perfect pullback to hold the trigger as a point of support before the move higher. And you may ask, you, you may ask me, Gates, how do we know that a stock is going to hold the trigger level? The answer is we don't. We have no idea if, if SPY is going to hold 403 as a point of support, but I'll tell you this, you miss 100% of the opportunities that you do not take. So you have to learn to master this system and trust the analysis, all right? The only thing that we can do is mitigate our risk, and you'll see that in the very next trade that I break down. But the only thing that we can do is mitigate our risk. I have no idea if SPY is gonna hold here, but my plan was to go long on SPY above 403, and that's what is put out in the day trade watch list. So if this pulls back and gives me that awesome, perfect pullback to 403, I'm taking that. And my stop loss is gonna be placed just below because this is a low risk play with the potential for a high reward. 
So we took the entry there. We got the move up. I'm going to go back to the alert room here. Uh, we took the entry there. I said high of day is our price target. So remember, high of day and low of day are always potential points of support and resistance. Understanding that high of day is potential resistance, that's becomes that now becomes our price target. Uh, then the rest is just trade management. SPY, we're up 13%, up 16%, 9.41. SPY, you can close this long or hold. It's up to you. Contracts now at 25, uh, sorry, 2.05. Out SPY long at 9.42, sold there for 20% plus. And I saw a few other members post that same thing, right? So we aim for, in this server, 20% profits, 10% stop loss. However, Anything above 10% is good to go if you want to take profits on it. This is base hit trading. We do not aim for the moon. We don't shoot for the sky. We're doing base hit trades. We're not aiming for 50, 60, 70% on a daily basis. Reason being is because it's realistic to expect to get 10 to 20% every single day. It is not realistic to hit 50% every day. Is it possible? Sure. Is it realistic? Not really. So we took that, uh, that was at 942. We took those profits here as SPY pressed up into the high of day. We actually top ticked that. Once that hit 20%, I was like, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and take this. Um, and then SPY pulled right back down. And this is where I mentioned, hey, if you miss this first entry, look for the re-entry. And so I did the same exact thing that I did over here. It was the same trade idea. SPY giving us that perfect pullback to the trigger. I saw a green candle. I'm going to go long off the bottom. And I was looking for the move higher. And we didn't get that. So what I did was cut the trade here. So this is the, the one that resulted in a loss. All right. And this one could have gone that way too. But it actually worked for us. But this is that 20%, 10% rule coming into effect and working for us here. We had 20% profits there. We had like a 10% loss here. So we're still net green. And we took the same exact trade. One worked and one didn't. So this is where you have to mitigate your risk. Uh, manage your losses. Don't let them go against you. Don't hold and hope. I know that this reversed later, but we didn't know at that time in real time that that was going to happen, that that was going to reverse. So I uh, wound up cutting this position because it didn't work out, right? Most trades that result in a winner will work out for you almost immediately. So as we got the move up, we were green slightly, started to come down, and I'm getting ready to cut. Then we got the next candle down. I'm like, yeah, I'm out, right? This is potentially rejecting 403. It reversed and ran back up. Oh, well. We didn't take an entry during this time, but what I did look at during this time was uh, Amazon. So let me go to the alert room here, and, I, and this is I'm just going to walk you through that loss. So I said, uh, SPY, I took re-entry at 944. That's going to be right here on this candle. Took re-entry as I saw the green off of the trigger level. I said, I'm going to close this. I said, stop loss originally was 402.4. 402, uh, and I should have respected that because it didn't close below 402.4. 402 Had I respected that, I would have probably been green on this trade. But I made the decision to move that stop loss up to 402.8 because I didn't want that to reverse on me. And then at 948, I closed the re-entry on SPY long, and that was on this drop right here, right? And so I was just following my plan, cutting it below this line of support right there, all right? Okay, on to the next trade. So yes, miss, miss the next run up on SPY, but what I did catch was the bounce move on Amazon. So I'll walk you through that. Um, I said SPY turd because it reversed. <laughs> uh, long idea, back and play on SPY, but be careful of the chop. So what I recognized then was now SPY is selling every rally and each dip is getting bought. So selling each rally means it's coming down. Dips getting bought means it's going up and we're doing this. Chopping back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But I said Amazon, long idea in play because it was holding 130 as a point of support. That's gonna be our trigger level. And it reclaimed on this candle here, reclaimed the previous day's close. Remember, this was one of our first trade ideas, which was a red to green. So as it went red to green, the idea here is that if it holds the PDC as support, potentially it stays green. Um, so that's what I was looking at here. As it reclaimed the previous day's close, that's gonna be that green line that you see on my screen. I looked, I was looking to take that long. Uh, and then I said, Amazon, I took entry. Again, same thing. I give you the contracts. I give you the fill. 
I give you the stop loss. We're up 7%. We're up 10%. And I told you, you can take profits here or hold. It's up to you. But if you do hold, move your stop loss to break even. There's no reason why a winning trade up 10% should ever come back down on you and result in a losing trade unless you're in with a starter position size, unless you're in with a smaller size, but you should always be protecting profits. So I took my profits as we got the move up, taking 10% profits. Why? Why would I aim for 10% here rather than looking for 20%? Well, because I told you guys that SPY is, we want to be careful of CHOP, right? SPY is in a range. That means each time it's near the high of day, it's looking to get sold. And because I just came off of a loss at 10%, I basically just made that money back with Amazon. So I recouped my losses on a 10% trade there on Amazon, right? 953, 1.67 fill. That's going to be 953 right here, 1.67 fill on those contracts. Now up 10%. 1.67 fill, contracts now at 1.85, sold into the strength because SPY was in a range. It was choppy. Um, it actually topped out at, at, at 190, and then I said, again, we're chopping. We're chopping on SPY. So I said, we're, we're going to sit on our hands here uh, at this time, waiting for direction. And then at 10.04, this is where Somebody asked me about this trade. This is where I decided to take a risky trade, which I don't normally do in the challenge account, but I took the trade anyways because SPY was in the range. So I mentioned this three times now up to this point. SPY's in a range. SPY's chopping. SPY's in a range, right? Then I go long on SPY at the bottom of the range. Why? Because a range is defined as a static line. Let me move this to the five minute time frame. It makes it way easier to see. A range is defined as a static line of support right here. Whoops. I don't know why that is red. Give me one second. Let me change this uh, so you can see it. I'm going to go four. change that to white, uh, solid lines, save as default. Okay. All right. So our static support is going to be in this area. And our static resistance is going to be in that area. And this is regardless of where the trigger is at. So you see now the range is a lot more clear. This is your this is your range right here. This is our resistance up top where these candles are rejecting. This is our support down low where these candles are holding. So relating that now over to the one minute time frame, we saw SPY push into high of day. That rally got sold, came all the way back down started to base and look at where it's holding this support line. So we got one, two, three, four candles holding support before I said, we're going to take this entry long, the, the risk, the risky trade idea, right? Uh, so back to discord, uh, 10.04 spy trade idea, long risky trade, same contract, stop loss. Uh, if you can't afford the paper cut, don't take it. I'm filled here at 1.6. All right. So I got filled 7.03. Right, that timestamp matches up 703, 704. Uh, I guess the alert went out one minute later. It didn't matter anyways because it was consolidating. But uh, I did get filled on the green candle. I did not get filled on the red one. The alert just came out a minute late, I suppose. Um, or maybe at the turn of the minute a few seconds later. But uh, yes, yeah, so we get filled here. We got the move up, reclaiming 403. And then the move up close to the high of day. And I should have sold... I should have sold in at the top of this candle into that strength, um, but I, I stayed patient and I was waiting. And as we saw weakness here, I actually sold like halfway through this red candle. So I missed out on a little bit of profits there, but it said SPY up about 10% from that entry. Contract's now at 177, entry was 160. And then I mentioned again on SPY, uh, oh, here we go. Spy long still working now at 180, now at 190. Uh, that's a top side reject. I'm out. That was at 1012. All right. So that's going to be on this candle here. Top side reject. I'm out. I saw the top of the, as you know, I saw like basically this lower high being put in. Hey, I'm out, right? It's rejecting high of days. Go ahead and close the position. Uh, then I said again, one more time, spy still a long idea on a hold over one uh, over 403. So back to our trigger level, $403. This was the level to watch today. Move up, pull back down, 
SPY is still a long idea on a hold of 403. I saw this print green and I hesitated and I didn't take the entry and then this pop happened and I still didn't take the entry and by that time I felt like I had missed the move then we got to run up into the high of day. So this trade idea that I did mention here, it worked, I just missed the entry. I said looking for another entry if it holds. I didn't like the topping wick on the five minute time frame, but this is the spot to defend for the SPY bull scenario. And then 10.15, hey, I didn't take entry, I hesitated. Happens. So what did we wind up with today? We had SPY long called out three times, two winners there and one loser. One of those winners running over 20%. The losers should have been less than 10%, hopefully less than 15%, depending on your entry and when you cut. Amazon long uh, called out. That one worked as well for a 10% gain. So that brings our total balance in the $1,000 account challenge uh, account to $21,372. Um, would have been a bit more if I didn't take that loss, but it is what it is. Still net positive on the day, still green on the day. You know, losers happen. They're inevitable. Uh, it's something that is just part of trading. You know, we, we can't control when the losses happen. We did everything right trying to go long again here off of 403. Um, it's just a trade that didn't work. And I know it, re I know it worked a few minutes later, had we held, it would have worked out, but that wasn't part of my plan to hold through this downtime and then let it work out. My plan was to look for another bounce up from here. And when we didn't get that move that I expected, I just closed it out. I know that over the long term, that's what's going to, to work for me. That's what's going to keep me profitable is cutting the position when it's not doing what I think it's going to do rather than holding and hoping, regardless of if it reverses later. Cool? Okay, press that like button for me. This right here, this whole thing that I just did, this is course quality content. This is really, really good stuff and material. And I want you to watch this video twice if you have to. But study the callouts, study the way that this server works if you're new to the server. Um, and study the way that, that we're taking, that I'm taking my entries and that I'm taking my exits. You know, the base hit trades, they add up over time. 20% win, 10% win, that's 30%. 10% win, that's 40%. 10% loss, that's positive 30% on the day on that capital size that I've been using. So let the numbers work for you. Cut the losing trades when they don't do what you think they're going to do almost right away. Uh, it's better to do that than hold and hope. And we're going to keep grinding on this 1K challenge account. But I need you guys to put in the work to study this stuff because I will not reopen the Discord server until my current members are up to speed with the methods that we trade within this server. All right. Thank you for your time. Again, press that like button for me. I appreciate all of you for watching the videos and following along. And uh, we're going to keep chugging. Okay. Take care and enjoy your day.